Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode, session, whatever you'd like to call it, of the Inner Circle. We are glad everyone could join us tonight. Um, tonight, our discussion is going to be led by none other than Mr. Dustin Mills. Are you in the south or north of the Mason-Dixon line currently? I am... Make sure I'm okay. I'm not muted. I'm actually back home in uh, Mississippi for the moment. Well, hallelujah. Hey, I will be headed up yonder again until they until they make that permanent transition down to Pensacola, of course. Yeah, but <laughs> we're just we're just gonna stand on that. So the word says, speak that as though it is, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so before we get started, though, we uh. Greg would like to share some things concerning prayer and and stepping over into and away from Gentile prayer and into spiritual prayer. So, Craig, I'm going to hand it over to you, and you got it. Okay. I just wanted to touch base with everybody, um, and, and I just want to challenge people. This isn't about, let, let me uh, preface the entire thing. There is no place in the Bible where Jesus asked us to be perfect. Just to be absolutely clear about that. We're learning as we go. We're on the job training, but I'm, I'm going to bring up some points and I'm going to challenge because I've been on well over, well over a 10 year journey on how to have powerful, effective prayer. And I found the best way that my prayers are powerful and effective are when they align with Jesus. So I wanted to actually challenge us with what transpired. I'm just going to use it for the example. But what transpired this week, a uh, text message went out. Um, there was upheaval with the encounters in North Alabama. And... All of about a week uh, grace period to actually get um, the encounters either a new place or settled where they were at. And uh, so the call went out to pray. I want to ask how many, I, I want to ask, but I don't need answers. How many people? came up with a good prayer think about it i thought about it i thought about the topic and i instantly went into prayer do i qualify for that action and i'm asking for a reason because in the garden the tree that was forbidden was the tree of good and evil. If we come up with a good prayer, but we didn't actually ask Jesus what he wanted, what his desire was, <clears throat> what is your outcome, Jesus? I want to proclaim it here on earth. It's a completely different approach. But when we start putting our prayers in alignment with his will and his timing, you're going to watch your prayers move mountains. So I just wanted to challenge everybody with as we're stepping into spiritual and we're doing more things from the spirit, we're as we're in the spirit, we hear in the spirit and we get answers in that spirit while we operate from the spirit. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there and kind of let things be directed by Jesus because I'm sure there was plenty of us that wanted to protect the encounters and even called for the encounter to take place this weekend. But that but that didn't end up happening. So we need to we need to make sure that we rely on his will and his timing and we'll walk with 
all power in absolute agreement. And that's just the couple minutes that I wanted to kind of, kind of borrow just to kind of put a little bit of um, prayer 101 or powerful prayer 101. So that's, a, that's all I wanted to throw out there. And I'm going to hand it back to Sean. So, so essentially this song, we're getting, making sure that we're, excuse me. So we're getting this right. So essentially when asked to pray, right. Or if you are entering into uh, prayer and it's not just the, so this is really the transition from, you know, the praying hands emoji to really being activated in prayer. And when you do that, the purpose is, is to not go off half cocked is to actually go back to the one who grants the, the grants, the prayer, right. Who it, you know, when he says in his word, anything that you ask of me in my name, I shall do. Right. But it also is pretty, it's kind of interesting because that verse that it talks about that too, it's talking about his, it is his will in Christ, right. Is when you're asking him things in his name. Yes. But is it in his will as well? And then, you know, I think that that's important. Like you said, it, it's got to be in both his will and his timing. Oh, it's interesting. I will. I will. I will. Yeah, great shirt for it, too. <laughs> yeah. I just noticed that. Yeah, I did, too. When I looked up, I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, so definitely going going back to Jesus. And you know what? It takes a lot of the guesswork out, too. Like, how should I pray? What should I pray for? You know, what what what, what is the best thing to you know, speak into this. Yeah, no, well, let's, you know, in his timing for sure. You know, and I, and, and when I sent that prayer request out too, I, you know, I followed up with a video saying, because I really felt like it was quick to jump on that judgment bandwagon, you know, how dare they? Well, what makes you think that Jesus wanted it then? He's, hey, there's a shift happening. And I think there's a, you know, for a much bigger reason. And I, I really, really felt like, and I, I to, even today, after having some conversation today, this is a chess game. And the master is a lot of steps ahead. Yes. Thank God he works with an imperfect kind perfectly. Yes. And we're maturing into our prayers. I just wanted to challenge us because a lot of times we go off, as Sean said, half cocked. Mm -hmm. And because we never took the time to ask, it's the mentality of orphan. Well, I've always done it on my own because, well, he's really not with me or I, I didn't feel his presence. So I just jumped out there to say, I got this. And, and our entire lives, we've acted as small G gods of this world because we made our own decisions and did things on our own. So this is um, trying to build a better dependency on I have a purpose to be here and I need to know your mystery so I can release it here on earth. And I hope that just makes a lot of sense. So, and I don't want to take up a lot of time from Dustin. I'm already eating into the clock. So <laughs> <laughs> love y'all. That's good. That's good. Well, thank you for sharing that. That is we're always quick to make sure that we catch a lesson and, and learn from that for sure. And that's, that's what this is about too, is, is learning and grabbing every nugget along the way. I heard a, I heard a, uh, uh, I was in a class about a week and a half ago and it was talking about an old man that was walking along. A, he was down by a riverbank and a young man came up and was going from point A to point B. And the old man, he, the old man told me, he says, I got a, I've got some information for you. He said, Along the way, along this river, you make sure that you keep picking up stones and pebbles. And the guy's like, the young man's like, man, what in the world am I going to do that for? So along this journey, he's picking up these pebbles along the way. He's like, I'm just going to listen to this old man. I don't know what he think, what he's thinking. He gets all the way there. He gets to the end of his journey. Now he's got this full bag of stones. And yes, the negative part of it is it's heavy. But then he opens it up. And because of all the moving back and forth, he's got nuggets of diamonds the whole way. So we got to be careful on our, on our walk that we don't forget to pick up the nuggets of information and the nuggets of things that will that will help us out along the way, for sure. So uh, I want to go ahead and kick it back over to Dustin. Like like Craig said, we're starting to eat into his time. So without further ado, Mr. Dustin Mills. I promise. You. 
Um, I, I don't know if uh, Sean may have told some of you guys, but uh, just before, just before I actually uh, hopped on here, I got to thinking about something, and instantly, I felt I felt a change. So if I I feel like if I kind of felt forth tonight, this is kind of where I feel um, feel led to go in this direction specifically. Um, but we're going to be speaking a little bit on the subject of power and, and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask for a show of hands, but, uh, I would like to start out by asking a, a series of a few questions. Who wouldn't want power and authority? I, I personally think I would. I mean, when, when you think about power and authority, um, to have the power or the say so means that you can be the the shot caller, right? You can uh, you call the shots, you make the decisions, and if you have that kind of power, who's who's to say that uh, there's anybody to stop you? Um, when you have the authority to do something, then power also goes hand in hand with authority. Um, but I took it upon myself also to ask even my kids and my wife these questions. When I were to, when I ask you what power and authority means, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? And one thing that Marley said was a shot caller, you know, somebody who, um, who calls the shot, somebody who has the authority to say what comes and what goes. Uh, and Xander's like, um, it kind of makes me think of a parent. I mean, you and mom have the power and authority in this house to to kind of do what needs to be done, you know, to, to carry on the, nece the necessary things. Um, and, and Heather kind of went back to the, the kings and queens thing when we think about power and authority. Um, and, I, and I, I don't mean to keep rehearsing the same thing about power and authority, but to be the shot caller and um, and the one who actually makes the decisions. But when we think about power and authority, not only do we think about decisions being made, but if we think about it long enough, a king or someone who has great power or great authority has to take into consideration those who he has power and authority authority over power and authority is not something that is to be taken lightly it's not something that uh should be wielded as though a sword um aimlessly so if uh i want i want to take a few a few texts tonight starting with uh, john chapter 1 and verse 12 i'll also take uh, a few moments to go to Isaiah 55 and 11. We'll do Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. Um, and I'm going to kind of hit some of these uh, pretty quickly. Uh, but 1 John 3, 1 and 2. Ephesians 1 and 5. And 2 Timothy 4 and 2. What was the last one you said? Uh, 2 Timothy 4 and 2. And I'm going to try to hit all of these uh, pretty quickly. It may, it may go very quickly tonight um, because the direction, like I said, the direction in which I wanted to go kind of changed, kind of changed over the last, uh, the last little bit. If, uh, if I will, Sean, can I ask you to say a prayer before we get, uh, before we get started? Yeah, Absolutely. And just so you guys know, too, all of those verses that Bustin talked about, they should, they're in your chat. They're listed out. So if you happen to miss them, they're in the chat. Lord, I just thank you tonight. I thank you for this opportunity to come together as believers, Lord, as, and, and just really dig into your word, Lord. We thank you for we thank you for the commitment and the obedience of Dustin to really dig into this, Lord, and, and, and be a vessel for you to speak through, Lord. I pray that you would touch him and the rest of his family 
uh, and bless them exponentially because of their obedience. Lord, I pray that we would have the hearts to receive this word tonight and the revelation and the experientialism in it as well, Lord. We pray that we would be open to receive that, Lord. Let us have the ears to hear, the eyes to see, and the, and the mouth to speak what it is that you've said to speak, Lord. And we just give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So I know I've all uh, started asking a series of questions, but one thing that really, um, I guess, I felt like the Holy Spirit asked me in in sitting down to do this lesson is the question is this, am I practicing what I'm preaching? Am I really practicing what I'm preaching? I said I would uh, kind of be flipping back and forth a little bit, but John uh, 1 and 12. John 1 and 12 says this, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. When we talk about the power and the authority of God, one thing that does come to mind is as we walk as Christians, as we preach this good news that comes uh, that, that has been given to us, what do we do with that power and authority? So many people, kings and queens and empires and, and dynasties have been raised and have fallen because the search and, and, and the, the pure craving for power and authority. They want to call the shots. They want to be that sole person that makes a difference that the entire world remembers. And as Christians, we would be foolish to think that we don't though we we would be foolish to think that we wouldn't want the people around us to know that we are Christians. But we must understand that the power and authority doesn't come in us. It doesn't come from us, but it comes through us as we yield ourselves to who he is. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Are we practicing what we're preaching? The power and authority of God, this was a thought I had. The power and authority of God is not given unto us for self-indulgence, but it has purpose. John 12 and 32 says that if I be lifted up, that I will draw all men. That's one I didn't put in there, Sean. I apologize. John 12 and 32 says that if I'm lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. We and ourselves, guys, we are nothing but filthy, nasty, rotten, dirty, no good individuals who decided to believe in a God. And because of our belief and our practicing, because we practice what we preach. What do we preach? We preach the Son of God. We preach Christ and his crucifixion that was that he came and give himself for us that we might become the sons of God. Amen. Now, he said, if I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. We must understand that power and authority is not just given to us as we just aimlessly run in and, and run out and, and do as we please with it, but it's for the edification of who he is. We must decrease that he increases. And as that happens, as we fill our set, not we fill ourselves up, as we give ourselves to him, he pours in, we pour out and he refills it. It's kind of like the old song. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup is overflowed. Y'all, anybody remember that that old that old song? I, I would like to ask this question also. As we proclaim to be Christian, as we claim to be preachers, teachers, um, sons and daughters of God, as we proclaim that. Is there, and, and it's cliche, I guess, 
But the question is this, is there enough evidence based on our actions and how we live our lives? Is there enough evidence to convict us of being a Christian in a court of law? Do we do it at church? Is, is it a Sunday morning thing? Is it just a Wednesday night thing? Do we do it? Do we raise all kind of craziness and chaos throughout the week? And and we put on our we got to put on our church hat today. It's Sunday, guys, gals. It's not just something we put on just haphazardly and just just go about our day like it's oh well. It's just it's just it's just Christian. We got to do it today because it's it's Sunday, you know, got to put on that Sunday best. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, something that has, <laughs> that that's really, um, I've been asking myself lately is what about the people that depend on us Monday morning? What, are, what about the people who are going through absolute hell? And, and it's been said to me, other people hang on because you hang on. Other people expect to see you pray uh, on those mornings before work because they know that somebody, whether or not they, they, they come and they join, they know somebody is holding it together and they depend on that. They must see that because when they do see that and they see that you're faithful through that, then they know that when they get in trouble, they can, I hate to the word uh, or, or like a treasure box, but when they know that they're in trouble, they can come to you and and they know that you can get a hold of God because of the life that you live. It's it's not just a a fad. It's not just something that just comes in and 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 leaves. That's not how I don't think that's how it works. What's that? Uh, the question, uh, I guess the question was, is there enough evidence to convict us of being Christian? Now, that power and authority that we that we talk about. The power. He gave us to be the sons of God. Now, we if we were to go over here in uh, Luke chapter nine and verse one. We see that. Uh, that Luke says this. And then he called his 12 disciples together. And listen, listen to me. He called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to curse. And to, I'm sorry, not curse, to cure diseases. And he sent them forth preaching the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. That tells me right there that it doesn't come from us ourselves it comes directly from him that he gave to us to use for his edification for his lifting up it's not listen guys we nasty they if, if i were to play if i were to have a screen right here on this wall and i were to play my life the the real dustin mills right here there probably wouldn't be a, a person left on here listen to me speak because that dude is nasty, okay? Not just dirty, but nasty. But the good thing is, is that dude is under, yes, he's dead. He's been put under the blood. When I buried him, old things have passed away, and behold, all things, not, not, just, not, not, not just then, but every day. Every day is a brand new day because of what he done. And listen, guys, to this, and, and I, I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'm preaching now. When old things passed away and all things were made new, guys, when that slate was wiped clean, there is nothing left to be accused of. That is the power of God that not only covered sin then, it covers sin today, and it's enough for tomorrow. The power of God unto salvation. 
Oh, golly, y'all. I get so hung up sometimes on just knowing that he cares enough to forgive me. To, to, <laughs> to wipe that stinking old man away. To, to, to put it all down under, under, oh, my goodness, under the blood. I am... I, I can't get over the fact that I am forgiven and he still loves me. That power that he gives to me to be, to be his son. Man, I don't know when I think about Jesus and how holy he is and the warrior that he is. And he calls me a brother. If, if, if Jesus was the son of God, then we are made heirs and joint heirs with him in heavenly places. And I'm getting away from my notes here just a little bit. But but y'all, if we understood the power that we have, we would be world shakers. There would be people around us that would be that would be changed. Do And that brings up the question to me. Do we really believe what we preach? Because I believe that if we preached, if we believed and we practiced everything that we preached, and I'm, I'm not getting on to anybody or anything like that, but I'm, I'm saying this, that if we believed it wholeheartedly, 100%, and we practiced it every single day, and we put that new man on every day, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes it's easy for Dustin to look back and get to feeling sorry for himself. Sometimes that's pretty easy. Because it's easy to remember who I used to be. But it's like the song says, it's then I am reminded <laughs> that I've never, that I have never been forsaken. And y'all, you never have to stand not one test alone. And the song says it's when I look at all the victories and the spirit rises up in me. And it's through him that I have been made strong. Mm, 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 mm. As we walk, as we talk, as we proceed, as we go forth and we, we pursue God as though it is a passion. If y'all... If we had to have Jesus like our next meal, <laughs> if we had to have Jesus as much as we have to have that next meal, there couldn't nobody, there couldn't nobody stand in our way. Paul took a moment and he told Timothy, I charge thee there before, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall judge the, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. He tells him to preach. He tells Timothy, preach the word to be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That don't sound like anything that we've seen today, does it? Hmm. I don't know about y'all, but my Bible tells me that he's not the author of confusion. Mm -mm -mm. They shall turn their ears from the truth, and, ye, and they shall be turned unto fables. Ladies and gentlemen, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the power and authority that was given to us, we must use every day to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and what he has done and to go out and tell the world that there is hope and his name is Jesus. That, 
that may sound like old fashioned preaching, but you know what? I like it. We need it. And I think I'm, I think I'm going to stop right there at, uh, I know it changed directions. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that changed directions from what I, I guess from what I started with, but I will say, y'all, as, as one body, as one family, let's come together like we never have before. Let's preach. And, and listen, listen, I, I'll say this. Craig said it earlier. Sean's talking about it earlier. There's not one of us that is perfect. There's not one of you are going to make mistakes. You are human. You can look in the mirror and know just how human you are. Nobody knows you like you. But the good thing is, is in spite of us, he loves us. And it is our job to hold one another accountable. And when we mess up, when somebody does mess up, don't call them on the carpet and condemn them for, for, for being human. But say, you know what? Tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow you shall stand in victory. Tomorrow will be the day that God will prove himself to you again. Get up. Get back on your feet. Get back in the Bible, in your Bible. Keep fighting. Keep, he called it the good fight of faith. Keep fighting that good fight. The power and authority that we have is not because we, like I said, we ourselves, but Jesus told his disciples, rejoice not that demons are subject to you, but because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, because of what he did is the reason we have power, we have authority, because he entrusted it to us, because we believed and put our faith in him. Let's go. Yeah, come on, brother. You know, he was about to pull the white rag out, right? You know, the preaching rag, when you got to wipe the spit off because it's spitting everywhere and you, you got all over the screen, you got to like wipe the screen off a little bit. Yeah, it, it was about to get there. So, yes, he's got it. He, yeah. Well, no, bro. It's all right. I don't know why you throttle back. One of these days, you're going to break that thing off. All gas, no break, bro. All gas, no break. Man, what an awesome, awesome, awesome study, man. Yeah, I'm going to let Mike go because I got a bunch of stuff I could share, but I'm going to let him go because, you know, he'll go for like 20 minutes. Hey, way to, way to fire up on a Tuesday, Dustin. So, so I'm going to try to keep it short because I got a pile of notes that I wrote too. So, you know, you think when you, when you first asked who wouldn't want power, I think oftentimes we confuse power with control. And those are two different things, two completely different things. You can, you can try to be in control of whatever you want to be, but if you don't have power, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. And, you know, can, you can be convicted of being a Christian. And, man, you talk about, you know, everybody looks at and sees, man, though, that guy's holding it together. I need you to hold it together for me because I'm having a terrible day. I've had a horrible weekend and I know I'm going to, you're going to be here and you're going to pray and you're going to lift us up. And man, you don't know how true that is because there are days, <laughs> man, especially right now with everything that I'm dealing with in my life and the things that I'm going through with my family, man, I get up some mornings and I don't want to do anything. It's a struggle for me to get up. It's a struggle for me to get out the door. But I know that in about 30 minutes, that I'm going to be surrounded by a group of men that are going to, they're going to be holding it together that day. And, you know, tomorrow may be my day to hold it together and they may be struggling. And if you go get kind of primal and kind of take, look at the animal kingdom. Our eyes look forward. Look at a deer. Their eyes are on the side of their head because they're not an apex predator. Look at a lion, even a tiger, a bear. Their eyes are rolled around on the side of their head. Some more forward facing because they're more of an apex predator. Our eyes look forward. 
They do not look behind us. They do not look beside us. And when you stand up in that faith and you, 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 when you talk about living how we live and you take that power that's bestowed upon us, we lead, we, we lead from the front. We don't have to look behind us because we've got somebody watching our back. We've got somebody that's guarding us. And when, when you lead from the front, that's where power comes from. That's when it grows. Because when you lead from the front and you set that example and you push forward, man, when you turn around and look behind you, it's going to be amazing what is behind you. There's going to be a bunch of other people behind you that are saying, hey, if that guy right here, this one, if he can stand up and he can do that and he, he's forgiven, you talk about playing a video of a life behind you, man. 25 years, I carried it, man. And that video behind me, they're not looking at it anymore. I, I don't let them look at it. Because they can look at that, they're going to see a difference between me now. And you, we, may, we, we say the saying a lot. Nobody, you, know, you said nobody knows me better than me. And we've said it before. I've said it a lot. Nobody loves me more than me. And that is a total fallacy. That is a lie we have been fed because there is somebody that loves us more than we love ourselves. And when we step out and we, you just push forward in that faith and say, hey, I know you love me. I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm going to mess up. But you forgive me, and we're going to keep trucking, and we're going to move forward. Man, they ain't no better feeling than knowing that there is somebody that loves me more than me. And I'm, I'm going to take Craig. I'm going to get off a soapbox and be quiet because I probably talked around 30 minutes. Go ahead, Sean. You all know that's right, too. Why y'all let him go first, too? <laughs> Who's up? Who's next? Who's got something? Oh man, what y'all quiet for? Jessica, what you got? I know you was putting some stuff in the chat. You was ready. You was ready to run too. I think. Sherry, how about you? Mm-hmm. Don't y'all be so nervous. I think everybody has a problem with us taking 20 minutes to talk, but when we shut up, don't nobody else want to like, say nothing. <laughs> yeah, see, y'all got George raising his hand, and if you think that, mm hmm Yeah, see, he's shaking his hand. He was trying to talk to me last night at midnight. Y'all let George go. All right. Well, I'll go. Go ahead, George. I Just been studying in the Word since uh, Saturday at about the 10th anniversary encounter. I know this ain't got nothing to do with probably what the topic is, but um, having a servant's heart, I've been in it. I feel like I've been absorbed in it. I've been talking to the Lord about it, and I'm really excited about it and the knowledge that I'm gaining from it because I'm actually learning how to use and read my Bible for the first time instead of and understanding what I'm reading, not just reading it, but understanding it and making the word come forth in my mind and God making it come forth in my soul and in my spirit and in my heart, because to be humble and misunderstood is like that authority thing or power or anything like that. Anybody in power can always be misunderstood about which way they're going if they're trying to take control of something so always you got to be humble and hum and have humility about yourself but i just know that the lord is complex and he is some all that he is is divine that's all he is is divine and he is the creator of all things at least we all expect it he is the creator of all things. Love, humility, compassion, anything you can think of, he's the creator. And I'll shut up for now. Amen. That's the co-part that you're getting involved in that as you gain that understanding, because now you're reading his word and that's where relationship is established. And when relationships established, that's when trust is established. 
And once trust is established, that's when authority is given. And when authority is given, that's when power is given. But all of this is done by our elder brother, who is our co-laborer. So he's going to make sure that we don't get too far off a reservation with some of this stuff. We make sure that we just hold on to his hand tightly and don't get too far away from him. Make sure right. that you stay close by. It's good. It's good. Hallelujah. There you go. Good job. Go ahead, Sammy. Well, Dustin, I'm sorry. I was on the phone, and uh, I'm sure a couple of the guys know who I was talking to. I was uh, getting some inspiration and uh, guidance and uh, getting pumped up with the Lord. And uh, But, Dustin, what I, that little bit I got, man, the Holy Spirit, man, is, uh, when he flows like that with you, yeah, he, he just let just it out, man. God is working with you. You can feel it. You can see it. The energy's there. Just what You just want to get pumped, man. It's like, ah, oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. But uh, like I said, I don't know what the whole about the the lesson was about. But man, Lord, uh, he, he he is he's awesome, man. If everybody just <sighs> just let him, just let him, let him, let him, just let him uh, take over. Uh, I did want to comment on uh, George was saying about reading. It was funny when you said that because I've been reading the Bible and and it did. I think he hit me. He he showed me. Hey, it's more. I I wasn't just reading it. I was living it. When I was reading it, I was watching a movie. I mean, I went literally. I could see every step, everything that was going on, and I was just. I said, look at the hair standing, man. I mean, literally standing up. He was, it, it was, I was blown away. I never experienced reading the Bible like that. I don't know if anybody, it, it, it hit me that I, I guess I was just reading it, reading it, but I was reading it and he showed me and I felt it and I felt him. I mean, it was literally a movie. It, I was there. I was there. It was awesome. Um, but George, when you were saying that, understanding the Bible, and it's alive, it's there. And what it was was too going back and forth within the scriptures. I mean, it was, and it's a and what I guess what I because it was an account of each person. I know this. Yes, of course, that's it. But I, it was, it just hit me because I was literally whoever's book I was in, I was in their shoes. I was seeing it. And then I was going back and reading the same thing from a different perspective, and I haven't seen it through his eyes. It was awesome. <laughs> it was that's, awesome. That's the experientialism, isn't it? That's you're not just reading the word; you're experiencing the word, and you're, you're a living word because that's where the life comes from. So you're reading from a place of not understanding here, but you're reading from it to to deposit it here. And when you do that. That's when you actually feel it and you're a part of it and you're ingrained in the in the word. And that's a that's a good place to be, boys. Mm. Place to be. Yeah, it was it was amazing. I ever now ever since I, yes, I love it. Every time I go, I guess it was it's amazing. Amen. Amen. Miss Sheila, what do you think of your son? How'd he do tonight? I always get excited when I hear him talk slash preach. And I just sit here and giggle because I'm just saying, yes, Lord, yeah. Yeah, Lord, there you go. Uh-huh, get him, get him, get him. <laughs> I'm just so pleased and so happy that he is back with the Lord. And, of course, I, uh, there was a time when I was, you know, and it's really, really hard to pray, God, whatever it takes. But when you get to that point and you say, God, whatever it takes to bring them back to you, that that's a tough prayer. But God knows you mean it, you know, and and I'm just I'm so thankful. And I see that he's hungry after the word of God. He's he's hungry after more of God in his life. And, you know, I pray blessings over him every single day. And I am so proud of him. That was just a little son, mama son talk there. <laughs> that 
think you uh I, I guess something that that hit my my thought process a while ago is that there we're talking about power and authority and and stuff like that um but there is a direct correlation between power and authority and servitude Jesus said all power and authority in heaven and earth, basically it's a paraphrase here, power in heaven, all power in heaven and earth, all the authority, all it, it's been given unto me. But Jesus, when he came, he came as a servant, yet a lamb led to the slaughter. He came to give to others. He didn't come as a, uh, uh, uh. he didn't come wielding a sword as the captain of an army just yet. Listen to me, just yet. But he came to the lost sheep of Israel, to the house of Israel, to serve, to, re to reunite what was broken so that mankind could have that relationship that God knew mankind would need so that he could redeem his people, his people back to himself. But listen, when he comes this next time, he won't be coming as the lamb led to the slaughter, but he will be coming in exemplifying the power and authority that was given to him. As we give ourselves to him, we are to give of ourselves to others to show them that what was given to us can be given to them. He didn't come, y'all, he said, though it had been just one, he still would have came. But had it been just me or just you, he still would have paid that price to rekindle that relationship, that broken, that severed relationship between God and man. But Jesus came to serve. And now that he has served He's given his life. And he's paid the price. Ladies and gentlemen, one day he's going to come back and he's going to be riding that white horse. Oh, man. I got to get in. I got to get this in before Shannon gets on there. Hang on. So what you just said about coming back on the, on the white horse and coming back in, 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 um, in his, his greatness and for what he was chosen to do when he comes back. So Jeremiah, Jeremiah 20 verse 11, but the Lord is with me as a mighty awesome one. Therefore my prosecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will be greatly ashamed, for they will not prosper. Their everlasting confusion will never be forgotten. I don't want to be on the other side of that. I want to make. Sure, I want to be on that side. I want to be on the horse beside him. That'll be when I get back on the horse. That's what I want. I, I want to be there. He he he'll be back as a mighty warrior. You're right. Okay, go ahead, Shannon. Look, man, I'm not gonna sit here with no good doctrine being preached and shut my mouth like some of y'all. And I'm going to call y'all out. If it's good, say it's good. Clap your hands, stomp your feet. If the preaching is good, you better say something. And that's preaching. So, Dustin, you always do it to me. That's why I'm telling them over here, granted, you said two things, and I'm not going to cover it all because you, in a short time, you gave a lot of meat. A lot of meat that we could sit here and we could talk about all night long. But I ain't going to take everybody's time. I'm going to say what I got to say. Get off my soapbox and move out the way. I had something beforehand, and then you just hit me again. There's a call in your encounter. Hold on. You're in, how you do them little fingers? Your encounter with Jesus Christ. That is a call to servanthood. And in relation to that, in regular life, everybody got a job. Everybody's been a child. They don't give you keys. They don't give you authority. 
they don't give you power until you're proving yourself. In this world that we live in, every day, you go and fill out an application for a job, you start your job, and they're not going to give you a raise in the first day. They're going to let you work. They're going to let you show up on time. They're going to let you be this ideal employee, and they're going to recognize it, and then they're going to promote. They're going to give raises. All the good stuff comes afterwards. But us as Christians, when we say, oh, Lord, I accept you as my uh, cross as my Lord and Savior, we expect to walk right into the power, right there. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. How are you going to give you something that you don't even fully understand? How are you going to give you power and authority and you don't even know how to walk in it? It don't work that way. Doctrine out. I, I'm going to go to that uh, Timothy that you just, because it speaks it right there in the word. Doctrine this out. Matter of fact, let me read it. Uh, you went to 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I'll start at 1 and read down to like 4. It says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his, kid, his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season, out of, out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all lungs, a long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. I like that. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And it, finished, uh, and it continues to read. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They'll gather teachers together to make themselves and the flesh and the lust that they're living in seem right. Oh, my God. Say I'm talking about that enlightenment. As I read this, I'm sitting over here like, like blown away. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. The world rather believe a fairy tale of what they think or hope to be true according to their own fleshly desires than to, than to step away from self and those ugly, nasty desires that Justin was talking about because we all got a past. We all got a history. If See, now you finna get me. You said something that hit me right dead in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit, in past, present, and future. You said, is there enough evidence to convict us as Christians in a court of law? And that spoke to me right then, right when it come out your mouth. That is so good, I may get a t-shirt with that made on there. For the simple fact, a lot of the brothers and sisters come one year ago to a courthouse where they tried to defame me. They tried to make me look like this terrible person. And the first thing that everybody recognized that come out of them prosecutor's mouth that said I was an overnight Christian. Sean, you remember that? They, The prosecutor said I turned into, 20 years ago, that I turned into an overnight Christian. The reason why you what you said affected me so much, back in those days, living in the flesh, but I still had the seed planted in my heart. I lived a life that I was good to people, but I didn't follow Christ. I didn't seek his face because I knew what I was doing was outside of his will. So the seed that was planted displayed this overnight Christian, but if I was walking in his will like you have so well he spoke about tonight, I would never have been in question. So I look at myself now. Shannon, is there enough evidence about you to claim you as a Christian? Yes. Yes. You know why the word is yes? Because every day Shannon is going to look in that mirror. Every day Shannon is going to break himself down before he walks out of that door. Every day I'm going to pray before I leave the house. I'm going to pray with my brothers before work. I'm going to pray throughout the day. And we'll pray to stay in God's will. This is me today. I'm telling you, man, you don't understand how heavy that was on my heart. To know what I was then, this, uh, I don't want to call make-believe, uh, that living this fad-style lifestyle, faddish. I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and doing totally opposite. To now, and now looking back and saying, I wish then. So what does Timothy tell us to do? Well, Paul tell Timothy to do? In this writing, preach, 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 because he allowed us to live 
from that past to the present to get here and recognize it was him that brought us along the way. But to go back, get those folks that are living in the past, well, living in a lifestyle now that resembles your past. This is why we're here. This is why we're here. This is why he allows certain people to go through things. Long suffering is a big word to us. Big. Power and authority comes. Servanthood comes first. In that full submission where your hands go up, Lord, I am yours. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what you think about it. When your soul says, I am yours, do with me as you wish, power is coming. Because when you can break down all the flesh and get every all that heart's desire, what your mind thinks is to be desired of this world, and you step outside of that and you say, God, whatever you want from me, how can you not receive power? How can you not receive under, spiritual understanding? Because you're no longer yourself. Everything that you've learned, everything that you've desired, everything that what your wants are all gone away because you are a new creation. Once you're that new creation, you start building a relationship with the person who saved you, with the person that created you. And now the way you pray doesn't resemble how you prayed before because everybody prayed. I don't care what nobody say on this world. I'll be bold enough to say it. Atheists have prayed. We got to say it in the military to say, ain't no atheist in a foxhole. Before death or when death threatens your life on this earth, the first thing people remember, God. They don't even know his name, but they know God. They don't know nothing about it, but they know God. God saved you. Come on, man. You're going to wait till your last second to call on God when he gives you all these opportunities beforehand. Not saying that don't work. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying how we get in this lifestyle of pleasing the flesh. But at that last minute of need, we want to call on the Father. We can't be that. We Nobody on this page can be this. Nobody that we know that's in our family can be this. Because the lifestyle we live, we're under a microscope. Just like I said before, them folks from the FBI going to sit there in front of all these people and say this is a, a sure thing that he's guilty because he was an overnight Christian. That don't even sit right with my spirit. That don't even go in the same sentence. You know what I'm saying? But they are in the world and of the world. We are in the world, but we are most definitely not of it. We are the ones that they should look at and consider different. If you are a Christian and you resemble the world, you need some self-examination. We are not supposed to look like nothing of this world. I don't care how good it feels. I don't care how normalizing it makes your lifestyle. If you are resembling the world, you are in the wrong. I am in the wrong. So when you start getting comfortable in that world, you better start praying. You better start fasting. I know it was either Sean or you, Dustin, that said something about if we needed Jesus as much as we needed our next meal, what would we be? Ooh, man, that's a statement. Because if you really want to examine fasting, it's not about the food. It's about sacrificing self. It's about stepping away from the desires and the needs of your mind. Jesus fasted for 40 days. We go on a fast for 24 hours and we feel like we're going to die. Like we like we're going to literally die. 24 hours. Jesus fasted for 40 days. Man, I don't know if I can do that. We miss 12 o'clock hamburger. We grouchy and cranky and wanting to cuss folks out. It's the separation of self. So when we examine our examine ourselves. And we think about going into these fasts. It's not about the food. It is not a diet. It's exactly what Dustin just said. Needing Jesus for everything. He will sustain you. He will. He's all that you need. You don't need no food. You don't need no water. You don't need no companionship. You don't need no brothers, sisters. Mother. You don't need nothing but Jesus. And when you get on that page right there, he will provide all of your needs. And you know what? He's such a good God. Some of your wants. And that is the truth. But we can't do it because we can't let go of flesh. We need to slap each other. We need to be family enough and blood brothers and sisters enough. Well, if we see 
either one of us dipping inside some flesh, we need to just walk up to him and say, hey, how you doing? Good morning. And slap the taste out of our mouth. Get your mind right. We understand that. Everybody's laughing. But we understand that, right? If somebody wants to come up to you, it's like, Dustin, don't be looking at that. And slap the taste out of your mouth. Oh, yeah, but wake you up. If, say, if Sean was to get me in the morning at 5 o'clock in the morning, right when I walked through the chill, and I said, ooh, wee, today a rough day, and he slapped me, my eyebrows would go up, my back hair would stand up, and then I'd look at him and be like, thank you. <laughs> I'm being real. I'm done. Thank you for that powerful message. You got it in you, Dustin. Let it out. Like Sean's been telling you, don't hold that junk in. I'm going I'm, I'm to start talking junk. Like I used to talk junk, but it's going to be in the right way. Y'all going to stop being closet, hush mouth Christians on this page. Y'all going to start talking. It says preach. It's got an exclamation mark behind preach. We're supposed to be boldly talking about the Father. We're supposed to be boldly talking about the Son. And we're supposed to be boldly fu functioning in his presence through the Holy Spirit. Boldly. Not with your mouth shut. Not with you sitting down in the church pew. We're supposed to be men and women of action. Because our God is real. Our God is real, real. So it's time for us to get real and start doing some things. Get off our lazy butts. Open up our mouths. Don't make me start talking about Moses. I can't talk, Lord. You know I, I stutter. Y'all see how that happens. Y'all see what? <laughs> Read your Bible. Talk. Open up. You may have a word for somebody on this page. Just like Dustin had a word for me. I'm telling you, hit me. It tore me up. Speak. Don't be ashamed. Ain't no right or wrong. Because everybody on here is on here for each other. We're, this is for edification. If you don't understand something, say it. Don't leave this group with a question in your mind. Why wait? You may not see tomorrow. Get it out now. If we got things in our heart that's stopping us from the power, because I know we all say we're going to heaven, but the power and the authority is coming for the edification of the body. So if you got something that's hemming, hanging you up and keeping you from that power and authority, then we need to get it out. So when we leave this house tomorrow, these homes, and you go out there in the world, souls can be saved. This is the calling on our lives. When you said you believed Jesus was real, when you uh, said to yourself and you said to God that you were going to follow him no matter what, pick up your cross, this is the commitment that you made to go out and labor. Go out and walk this life. That is laboring. Everybody know when it's something that you know in your heart or in your lifestyle that you're doing that's not in the will of God. It is so hard. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm right there with y'all. It is so hard to stay away from them things. So we have to pray. We have to fast. We have to go into combat, as Sean likes to talk about, against these things. But we have to realize and understand that we cannot function in those things in the public because the souls that we were purposed to help save, to help get to Christ, they are paying attention. And when we function outside of God's will, they're not coming. We missed the mark. We missed our assignment. So just like when parents have kids, your life doesn't matter. It's all about that kid. Now when you sign on with Christ, you got a job to do. And it's to walk in that light, be of that light, and speak of the light. So we bring others into the fold. I'm done. Come on. Craig's next. <laughs> I waited for somebody else to jump on this, but... <clears throat> um. In everything that we do, first seek the kingdom of God. I'm going to say it again. That's not heaven. That is Holy Spirit. When you first seek the kingdom of God, a.k.a. the Holy Spirit, you are accessing and you will start walking in and with power and authority. He said, be power and authority, Jude, Jude 24 and 5, with dominion and majesty. He declared it. He said, be. Now it's his job to have you become. 
And all he's waiting for is your agreement, not your works, but your agreement. When you agree with him and say, okay, I don't know how I'm going to get there, but that's your job. Now you're king. Now you're in dominion. Now you operate with all power and authority. It is a matter of maturing. But that maturing is actually the, um, that mindset that we can step into. Okay, so I just need to back up and relearn life. What I've done my entire life, I've done, but now I've got somebody to help. I've got an helpmate. I've got, um, I've got my attorney. I can't think of the other word, advocate. <laughs> um, I have all, I have been equipped with everything I need to overcome. And relationship gets me the keys to the gun cabinet. That's the maturity that you need to have to make sure that it's okay to have access to the bullets and the guns. You can walk in everything. You don't have to continue to ask what he's already given. Now it's a matter of maturing into release. Just walk in it and you'll walk through it. And that I promise. I've lived it too many times. He, set, he sets us up for success. Power and authority just comes right along with the walk. As long as you're walking with Holy Spirit, not warring against, but walking with the Holy Spirit, exercising the good fruits where there is no wall that limits. That's all. Amen, amen. Anybody else got anything to add? Yeah, I got a missus. Hang on. So in the in our process, you know, one of the, I think the first question that Dustin asked was, who wouldn't want to walk in power and authority? Well, I I want to. I'm sure that we all want to, to at least to some degree. But sometimes I don't feel the confidence of of um, I don't I don't feel the confidence to do that. So along the way, I mean, there are times when I feel a boldness come on me, and I just I release myself, my body, control of my body over to the Lord, and things happen. But in the meanwhile, I am good, and I'm just saying this from a personal perspective, I am good getting those little nuggets along the way. I'm good with the little things that happen where, where I see that power and authority in it. And God says, you may think they're small, but I don't. So that God just said that to me. Um, and just as a, as a, an example of that, I was at work and a bee landed on my, on a piece of equipment that was less than, less than two feet from my face. And it was on my face level, right? And I have no fear of bees or wasps or anything like that. I just love them. I adore them. And I spoke to the bee and I just said, I honor you. And the bee wasn't afraid of me either. Now, I know that probably sounds so silly to some people, but somebody next to me, which I really was not that necessarily mindful to them paying attention or anything, but she said, Mary, 
that is so inspiring that it, it just feels so inspiring for you to do that and say that. And of course the flea, the bee flew away. There was no, there was no panic for, you know, anything, but that was a small moment of an exercise in authority of with, with, with creation and dominion. And, and dominion and somebody else witnessed it and just being a witness uplifted her in her faith. So even sometimes we think it's a small thing, like, you know, I've got accustomed to that. I don't mind it. Even if they land on me, I, I don't mind it at all. They don't sting me. And so I've got, I've come accustomed to it and I've gotten used to it. And so it seems like a small thing, but it really is bigger than my conception. But, but I was saying all that because I'm okay if it's a small thing because I'm growing and I know that it's promoting my growth and I'm okay with it being a small thing. And some, some years ago, I prophesied to a man and he kind of got, he had some church hurts and he said to me, he said, well, you're never gonna, you, you may get a word from the Lord and, and it may be an accurate word and all, but you're never going to speak in front of a crowd of 5,000. You're never going to get up. That's what he said to me. And I looked at him and the Lord said this, the Lord gave me these words. And I told him then, I said, you know, if I, if the only thing I ever did was give a prophetic word to a man, to a stranger at the laundromat, because that's what it was, to a stranger at the laundromat. I'm okay with that. Now, speaking in front of 5,000 people does make me feel panicked, <laughs> to be honest with you. But I, I would be okay with that too. But but I'm okay with I'm okay with just exercising authority and dominion <clears throat> in in my conception are small ways because I know God is going to use it. it. So anyways, I just wanted to say that because it's, you know, we all want to be there for those big things, you know, pray and somebody grows a foot back or, you know, you pray and, and somebody get, comes back from the dead. We all want to be there for those, what we consider big things. But God's concept of big and small is way different. It's just way different. And so I want to be obedient even in those small things. And especially probably for me in those small things. But anyway, so um, that that really hit me when you asked the question, who wants to who wants to have power and authority? You know. I think we all probably, even if nothing else, but in the spirit, raised our hand. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Tammy's got her hand raised. Go ahead, sis. Hey. Hey. Um, I think when, like when I'm doing the power of praying wife, I think that when we started all that and they're talking about the power and authority, you know, it's hard. The ladies didn't know what it is or that it belongs to them or know how to use it and so i think the lord you know when we look in luke 10 19 when it talks about i give you authority to trample on serpent it's not like a brute force it's like it's like delegated to us because of who we are and that's the authority that we have in christ and, and explaining that to the ladies you know um you know god almighty himself is the power behind our authority you know and I share with them, but the most thing that I have to share with them, I always read Matthew 21, 22, whatever you believe and ask my name, you receive it. And so believing it is a biggest part of, to me, of knowing the mighty power that you have in him, you know, we are backed by the power of the God's might. And it belongs to us because he says, um, 
like in first Corinthians 12, it says Jesus is first Corinthians 12, 27. Jesus is the head where the body and his authority is perpetuated through the body. And he transferred him authority, you know, to the church in God's mind. When Christ is raised, we're raised with him. So everything that, that Jesus has, that means everything that's his, including his authority and the power belongs to us. But understanding that to, is so hard when I started teaching that to ladies. And when you exercise your authority, you know, you have to grasp that you have it if you believe it and, and stand in that. And you can stand in front of the enemy in his name and say no in Jesus name and and he'll back up, you know, but it has to make it very clear that the name is the key to all the authority. Whatever you ask in my name that I do, that the father may be glorified, the son, if you ask anything in my name and John 14, 13 and 14 says and I think it was hard to understand of what it is, how to use it. And but once you get it and grasp it and you believe it, it is you have everything that Jesus has that God gave him. We have. That's just what was on me. I had I was driving. I had to pull over. I couldn't take it. I had to get out there and share because <laughs> it's like when I'm teaching the ladies of power pray and wife, it's like you have to believe and know that you have this power in you. That was given to you as long as you believe him and you're doing it through the Holy Spirit and you're living right and you, you know, it's just, it's powerful if you get it. That's all I had to say. Hey Amen. I'm glad you pulled over though. I, I did. I probably wouldn't though. I probably would have just kept driving. <laughs> and all no, I pulled over because I can't. Take can't it my sister's much safer than I am. <laughs> well, and I'm telling you, Dustin, it's amazing. I, I just, oh, I just love this lesson. And I, I mean, I love all, but I'm just telling you the power because I so, that's what I want to, when I'm teaching these ladies, the power that we have, that we can pray over our children, our family and our husbands and our life. You know, it's just if, once you get it and believe it and know that it's through his authority in his name is the only way, you know, believe in him and that who he is. So, okay, I'm done. Amen. Miss Tammy, that one thing that I didn't hit on that I said that I would bring that what you said brings me back to Isaiah 55 and 11. Hang on, let me let me get there. Isaiah 55 and 11. And so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return void, but it shall accomplish that which is that which I please. It shall prosper in the things where into I had I where I send it. <laughs> his word, he says that his word will not return. Boy, Jenna, you said something just uh, just a few minutes ago, and I hope I, I don't mean to be offensive, but I'm I'm just going to say this: there's no such thing as my truth. <laughs> Y'all, if you believe that, if you Man. believe, you have been deceived. There's no such thing as my truth. There is the truth. And there is what his word says, and it has the final say so. And we as Christians are not to roll over. The world will tell us that I thought you was a Christian. Ain't you supposed to turn the other cheek to me? Just because we're a Christian doesn't mean we turn over and play dead. We, in the experiential portion, as he pours into us, we pour out to others he goes before us, he fights for us, and therefore it's not us that fights, but when we stand strong in his truth and the truth, not my truth, but the truth, then God will, the same thing that, that, that Paul told Timothy, preach, to reprove, to rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the truth on our side. As long as we stand on that, let the world be laid barren. 
we have the truth and God's word will stand sure. Second Timothy 2.19 says this, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal, the Lord knows those that are his. Listen, just as you're a Christian and the world sometimes seems to be stacked against you, God ain't forgot you. He knows where we are. He knows where we stand. And as long as we continue to stand on him and his truth, we shall not be defeated, period. I don't know what you quit for. Stop, stop rubbing your hands together and preach, boy. Hey, we, we just need to go ahead and tie him up here pretty soon. We'll just go do some Walmart preaching. <laughs> we'll find some we'll find some Walmart in like middle Mississippi or maybe run over to Georgia or something and then he won't he won't be throttled at all. <laughs> wind up toy, just wind me up, turn me loose. <laughs> I'll tell you something about the fire of God. If it's it's contagious. Hey, say what? It's contagious. <laughs> yeah, well, if it's trapped within your body, it will cook your flesh. Let it out. Let it be bright. You'll only get more, but don't ever contain it. It will cook your flesh. Mm -hmm. And that's in the physical. I'm not joking. I heard, I I remember to, you I, saying that before one time too, Dustin, talking about it being shut up in your bones. Come on. Let I it rip. To, I have to ask this. So we all know we've been in the South long enough, and the South was big on the fire and brimstone preaching. Y'all remember back in the day, these men were bold, and they used to go out in the public to your Walmarts, to your convenience stores, to your uh, city squares, to Anywhere a uh, gathering, people would come throughout the day, and them jokers would yell, scream, and preach the gospel like it was going out of style. Repent, repent, repent. I'm talking about thousands of John the Baptist. Why? Why we don't see that much today? Why don't that? That's that's my question for everybody that you on the night. Why don't we see some of that today? You don't go in Walmart and see people. You see them handing out cards. You'll see them handing out invitations to church. You'll see, like, the modest side of things, of Christianity. Hey, brother, won't you come to church? You know, I know the love thing, but you don't see them bold people out there. Just, you see them on uh, social media. You know, you can look them up, and they're out there in the world. But in our own communities, you really don't see it anymore. Are we afraid? Are we afraid of persecution? Are we afraid of ridicule and judgment? What are we afraid of? Because we get on this Bible study right here, and boy, we be lit. Dustin will bring a word. Sean will bring a word. Craig, Andrew, Rebecca, somebody. Somebody's always bringing a word on here, and it fires up everybody. I think we need to start getting back to some old ways and showing being bold about it for real. And the start was that hugging thing that Sean put together. And when they went down that I couldn't go through that, I wish because I'm a hugger by nature. That was the beginning. That was the love side. Now it's time to press that word out. You know, we are set apart. And we are a chosen people. And if we really care about them souls out there in the world, like Jesus did, then we will be doing as such. You know, I say a lot of people have a lot of things to say about the Jehovah Witness. But I'll say this. I pat them on the back and applaud them how bold those people were to knock on everybody's door to tell people about their faith. I applaud the Muslims for doing what they do. They stand by their faith. It seems like us as Christians have the most to gain and the most to lose, but we ain't out there in them streets like other religions. I'm talking about us as a whole. I'm not talking about us as individuals because I know some bold people on here, but I think that's a turning point. When you're that bold to get out there and you preach that word of the gospel, like it's your last day on this earth, man, I'm telling you, that has to appeal to the Lord. It has to, for the simple fact, you're stepping outside of everything that you're comfortable doing. 
everything. I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm going to stop at the Sefco because I stop and get my tea and cookies every day anyway, and they know me by first name. I think I'm going to just stand out there and talk about the gospel a little bit. I'm going to try this out. I'll let y'all know how it go tomorrow. If if I go back to jail, somebody please come get me out. <laughs> get your checkbook ready. <laughs> Boy. All right. Anybody else got anything? Wasn't there, wasn't there a song when we were kids we used to sing in church all the time? I don't know. I wasn't. Hiding, under, hiding under a bushel? No. Yeah. You're about the light. Let it shine. And Chad had turned his camera off, so that means he's probably eating him chocolate chip cookies and drinking his tea right now. I am not. I know my internet goes in and out, and it be chopping up my words, so I turned the camera off. Thank you very much. All right. We're reeling it back in here. If anybody got anything, go ahead, because otherwise I'm going to share this real quick. Three, two, one. Okay. Dustin, man, awesome. Capital A-W-E, some. You did an awesome job, bro. And like the thing about like Shannon said it too, you like you you can put it, you put it together short, sweet, and delivered it. Meat only. There was no gravy, no mashed potatoes. It was all meat. So on you, bro. That's awesome. The thing that you mentioned about that question, I think that that's a resounding question that we need to ask ourselves every day when we wake up. Is there going to be evidence when I put my head on that pillow tonight to convict me of being a child of God? Not just a Christian, but a child of God. What have I done today to prove that I am a child of God? What am I going to prove today to my elder brother that what he did on the cross for me was worth it? And if I can sit at the, and if I can put my head down at the end of the day, go, crap, I did a horrible job today. Guess what? We're going to have days like that. But the sun goes down and the sun comes up. And tomorrow is going to be a new opportunity. And what you do with that, whether you take that back to daddy and say, Lord, please forgive me. Father, please forgive me for failing or whatever it is. And don't beat yourself up so much about it. My goodness, he's given us new opportunities. It, he says, grace and mercy follow us all the days of our life. So it's like it's like two posted angels everywhere you go. Grace and mercy. Come on, y'all, let's go. First thing. Second thing about power and authority. There, there's something that, and I don't mean to be the old fuddy-duddy here, right? But I think that there's something we need to understand is that with that power and authority, it says that he's a co-laborer. So that means that we have to be responsible for what we've been given. And we have to be good stewards of what we've been given. So if you're given the power and authority to do these things, you don't use them in a bad stewardly way just to control somebody, to speak down your nose at somebody. That's not the whole purpose of that. It's to edify somebody else. It's to lift somebody else up. It's to it's to let to be a vessel for the Holy Spirit to work through, to speak through, to touch through, to edify somebody else up, to lift them up because of where they're at or what they're dealing with. That's it. If we only knew how much, when we will get out of the way, when we will decrease and he increases, when we will get to that place, the more we decrease, he increases. And just having a remnant of that power and authority that passes through us, if we really understood that and really grasped that, that is like a stallion that you grab the hole of the rope and you just better hang on because that's it. And that's just a remnant. That's not the whole thing. Hello. I had to go pee. Oh. Love it. I'll be back. <laughs> You know what I mean? It, it, it you just couldn't grab, you couldn't hold on to it because it's so powerful. And like Craig said, the more that you pour out, the more that he's going to pour in. You are a you are a transparent vessel. Let that let it all go as fast as it can. The more you pour out, the more you pour in. And here's the other thing: the more that you pour out, and the more that pour, he pours in, it's like flushing stuff out. So anything that may get in there, it just continually flushes it out. And that's the awesomest thing about it, right? Third thing. Shannon, you talked about going out. Why don't they go out and do those things, right? So there's a scripture that talks about that. Um, 
Luke 10, I think you might have re did you did you resort to that? Let me see. I think you might have mentioned Luke 10. I know that you mentioned a Luke. I think it might have been Luke 1, maybe. Anyway, you mentioned Luke 9. Luke 10 talks about this, and this is where he's sending them out two by two. And he says, and this is from the TPT, he says, after this, the Lord Jesus formed 35 teams among the other disciples. So that means all the other people that were following him, not the 12 disciples, all the others. So that means the rest of us, right? He, he formed 35 teams. Each team was two disciples, 70 in all, and he commissioned them to go out of out ahead of him into every town he was about to visit. He released them with these instructions, and this is where it comes in red. The harvest is huge, but there are not enough harvesters to bring it in. As you go, plead with the owner of the harvest to send out many more workers into the harvest fields. Now off you go. I am sending you out even though you feel as vulnerable as lambs going into a pack of wolves. You won't need anything with you. Trust in God alone. And don't get distracted from my purpose by anyone you might meet along the way. Here's the thing. He sent them out. He commissioned them. He gave them everything they needed. They didn't have anything. That they had nothing of what. They didn't need anything. Only trust. So when we go off half cocked, like we talked about at the beginning of this session, and we don't go back to Jesus and say, is this where you need me to go today? What do you need me to say today? If we get out of our own head and get into our heart and allow our heart to lead us, because that's where Jesus lives, we allow him to lead us because we're co-laborers with him. It's so much easier. Then you can start, you start to, the revelation starts to come, you know, there, there's, the, and you don't, it doesn't make any sense sometimes, but you're walking in power and authority because you're walking with your elder brother. And guess what? I ain't letting go of Holy Ghost. I'm going to stay right on him. I'm going to hold his hand. Dude, get me a sash because I'm going to tie that thing up. I don't want to get, I don't want to get off the, off the reservation and just stay close to him. You'd be amazed at how much it, and how much simpler it is. It's so much simpler when you're not trying to figure things out. I'm like, well, I got to get, why, why don't I understand this? Why don't, the understanding comes from here, not here. When you arrest that word in here and say, Holy Spirit, help me to understand. Help my unbelief. Help me to, help me to grasp this. Help me to know where to go. And get rid of this. Get rid of this mind thing. Because the playground of the mind is where the devil has all his work. That's where all his stuff happens. So if you will be led by the thing that, that gives you life, which is your heart and not your head, you'll be way better off. Way better off. Somebody got a comment. Let me see. Oh, yes. That's all I have for tonight. Um, does anybody else have anything? That is a very short, powerful, quick study. And that's that's the way it can be. Bro. That was awesome. I love you. I'm so thankful that you jumped on this. This is, yep. Man, look at him. He's getting all the, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Nobody else has anything? Let's, uh, yeah, I only got one page of notes here. It's good. Um, any prayer requests or praise reports? And before we start our prayer, prayer requests, okay, we're going to make sure that we go to Jesus and say, okay, Holy Ghost, Jesus, Father God, what is it that you want us to do? Where do you want to use us? Okay. Any prayer requests? Praise reports. I have a uh, praise report. Uh, my daughter texted me about two hours ago and told me I will be a second time granddaddy in August. Hallelujah. I, so y'all, uh, in a prayer request, y'all pray for um, help to her carrying this little girl. So I have a Grandson and a granddaughter here shortly. How far along is she? She's due in August. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell y'all what. I got a lot of celebrating and a lot of praising coming up. Go ahead and start now on credit. In there. In there. I My credit about to run out. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm already praising. Do I need to get you a box of pencils? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, y'all think I'm playing. <laughs> my praise is going to start. I, I just talked myself into it. I'm going to the Seth Co. Friday since I'm off, and I'm going to preach some gospel. 
You better ask Daddy first. I'm I'm going. I you. I'm not going to do anything without asking Daddy first. <laughs> but I am. I'm pretty positive that's what he wants me to do. Love on people, and just be a person, a, a Christian, not that overnight sensation, that lifelong commitment. Don't scare the kids. <laughs> but just feel secure. Your name's not John. I think it'll actually turn out nicely. <laughs> yeah, I had to unmute and laugh at that. <laughs> I can see him out there now eating a honeycomb of honey. <laughs> Sean, can you hear me? Always. Sean. I can always hear you, George. Go ahead. Okay, well, I just wanted to let you know that my sister is at a crossroads right now between the church of her husband and coming back to Milligan Assembly. She, we talked for two hours today about that. And she's um, at a very, very serious crossroads in her um, life right now with that. So please Praise keep God. her in prayer. Absolutely. Praise God. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. We just pray that the Lord gives her the GPS instructions on which direction she needs to go. What show? What show? Anybody else? Hey, pray for moms. She's really been coughing. The last two nights really bad. And so just pray for her. Yeah, Susan just brought her some medicine. Anybody else? That's what we're oh, go ahead, Dustin. So I remember uh, my sister, Ashley, she's um, she's seeing things a little bit differently uh, right now, and she needs some clarification. Um, we'll talk offline. Anybody else? Uh, let's see. Otis Ware, Myron says. Oh. What can you tell us about Otis Ware, Myron? Pray for the family of Otis Ware. Yeah, his uh, grandkids uh, were born uh, premature, and so they just uh, been hanging on. Premature grandchild, you said? Yes. How premature? Uh, I think it was around three, four pounds. Oh, it's amazing what they can do these days, man. I'm telling you, 27 years ago, my son was born two pounds, five ounces, and he he could oh, fit wow. he could fit in my my hand right there from the there to there. And they said that he wouldn't be nothing; he would be this and that. And I said, man, and I mean, you know him now, <laughs> praising and worshiping, so. We lift them up to God for sure. Anybody else? Also, Sunday, I'm going to be flying back to Maine. So, so flight and assignment south. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> Definitely south of the Mason Dixon. <laughs> Just pray for the nation as a whole, Sean. Yeah. Clarity for sure. Clarity for this nation, because there's a lot of division. It is not only been coming, but it's going to it is going to get much worse before it gets better, for sure. So just we just want to make sure that we're pressing into that. There is a judge that's coming and he's coming on. He's coming soon. So let's leave it up to him. But just keep loving and stay vigilant, stay vigilant, stay vigilant. All right, if that's it, then let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this night. We thank you for the word that's been shared. Lord, we thank you for its power, for its authority, and for its, its root-taking capability deep inside of our hearts, Lord. We thank you for the servant that, that shared your word, Lord. Uh, thank you for, for him, Lord. I pray that you would continue to bless him in his travels, Lord. Bless his family. Let there be provisions there to get him back down south where he is close to his family and he can continue to, to lead his family. Lord, we thank you for him. We thank you for what, what he means to this ministry, what he means to the kingdom, Lord. Lord, we lift up so many of these prayers. But before we do, Lord, we ask 
what is it that you want of us? Where is it that you want us to go? What is it that you want us to speak and pray, Lord? And in that, we ask that you would be glorified and magnified in all that, in our obedience and in our transparency, Lord. So as we lift these things up, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you that we get to be vessels for you to use. We get to be your children. That is an awesome, awesome responsibility. It's an awesome blessing to be called, to be or have our names written in your Lamb's Book of Life. And Lord, we don't take that lightly. Lord, I pray that our stewardship of what it is that you've given us would be would be uh, evidence in the courts of heaven that we are your children and that we you are pleased with us. And that when that day comes, we'll hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. But as we stand here today, Lord, and we intercede on behalf of all these prayer requests, Lord, we stand in the gap Lord, we lift these up to you. We lift up Georgia's sister as she's at a place right now where she needs to know the direction of where you want her to go, not where she wants to go. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would draw her to the place where you've always had in place for her. Lord, let your will be done in her life. Lord, we pray, give you a praise report. We thank you for life that's been, that's, that's in the womb now, that is, that is being develop lord we pray that your hands will be around that as a hedge of protection that you would breathe continual life into that baby into that grandbaby lord and that you would give the mother strength and devotion to you lord that she would raise this child up and honor you with that child lord we just thank you for this right now lord we lift up those in need of of physical healing in their body lord and, and sicknesses Lord, we lift up Mama right now with this cough that she's got. She's in a place where, you know, she she needs a touch from you. She doesn't need any more battles coming against her, Lord. But as always, we pray your will into these situations, Lord. Not ours, but your will. Whatever it is that you'll have, Lord, we will lift them up and glorify you. Lord, we thank you for the clarification as well for Ashley. We pray that that the understanding would come directly to her heart, Lord. And that her mind would become subject to the heart that where you live. And that you would continue to lead her where she needs to go, Lord. And that peace would come upon her. Because in that peace, that's where the clarification is and the understanding. Lord, we pray for the family of Otis Ware and this premature child, Lord. What, I, I have evidence of what you've said in the past and what you've done, Lord. And my son being super, super premature and, and, and the world saying that they wouldn't make it. But Lord... It's in your will and your authority, and we trust in that. We believe in that. We believe in your miracle-working powers, Lord. We believe in those things, and we trust in what it is that you have for us. We trust in your will. Lord, we lift up all these prayer requests today and these praise reports to you, Lord. And, Lord, we lift up the, our brothers and sisters to the north, Lord, that are that are facing difficult situations, and we know that there's lots of lives at stake today, Lord. Uh, and, and we know that your direction is in this, Lord, but we pray today that your will be done and that you would get all the glory. And Lord, that those lives would not be lost, but or doors would be open and unity would come back to the, to, the, to the body of Christ, Lord. We just give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Love y'all. Meet us back you. here next week. Um, I don't know who who is supposed to go next week. Oh, it might be me. I'll have to look and see. But anyway, you know it's going to be good because the Holy Spirit's going to be leading it. We're just going to be on for the ride. Love y'all. Have a wonderful night. You other gentlemen, you. see you in the morning. One last thought. Yes. David Livingston said this. Paul says we are pressed for the mark of the high calling, press forward, press towards. David uh, David Livingston says this final thought: I'll go anywhere as long as it's you with it, as long as it's with you, Lord. I'll go anywhere forward. Amen. Capital. Amen. Amen. Love y'all. Love you. Good night. Love you.